I want to share with you four underrated features on GitHub that you've probably heard of, but I want to emphasize the importance of, of them. They're so important. They will help you and your repo look more professional so you can both stand out. Do you not want that dream job that you've been thinking and dreaming about? Do you not want more contributors and stars to your repo? Well, if that doesn't sound interesting and you don't want to succeed, this is where on YouTube you pick another video down the side or that side. I can't remember which side it's on. But, you know, have a great day and I wish you all the best. For those of you who are still here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already. It's completely free and supports my channel so I can create more free content for you. Right, back to these four tips that I promised you. Tip number one, issue labels. Why, why, why do most people not use issue labels? I honestly, I don't know why. They're super easy to set up. You even get default ones in your repo and you can create new labels and edit existing ones as well. GitHub does give you the defaults. There's a good place to start and you can customize it later. These will not only let you get more organized, but it will make your project discoverable. Yes, discoverable. When people search GitHub, they don't search for a word or a phrase like you would on Google, they're searching for labels like a good first issue. So it's really important to have this on your issues in your repo so your project can appear in their search. For those who are still here, here is an extra bonus hot tip. Always have a good first issue available on your project. When someone takes it, make sure you create another one so you always have a good first issue on your repo, but make sure it's something that someone's gonna to wanna to contribute so it's easy to get started. And also make sure it's something you wanna accept and want to have in your project. That's a super hot tip. Don't tell anyone, we'll keep it a secret between us, just me and you. Tip number two, project boards. These are a great way to get organized. There are two versions now. You've got the Projects Classic, which I call version one, the old version, and you've got the Projects Beta, which is version two. I do have a full video on comparing the two between them. Let's focus on version one and you can create multiple project boards and then you just get a standard Kanban board. You can customize this further if you want different columns and you can move them around, all that great stuff. But I just really like to do in progress, in review and done. It's super standard and everyone can understand it and get it immediately. Version two is more advanced. There are many features. You can have different points of views. You can automate a lot of things. Like I said, I've got a whole video on this link in the description below. But my point is, whichever one you use, it will make it easier for you and your maintainers and your community to understand the current state of the project and what's going on. So definitely use it. Tip number three, GitHub Actions. This is the engine of GitHub. It can run anything and it can do anything and be triggered by anything. There are so many actions already available for you to use. You can just copy and paste the YAML config. But if you want to write your own custom one, you can also do that in Java script or another language that you prefer. Do you want to run a linter for your code, for example, when there's a commit or a PR? GitHub Action is your friend. Do you want to deploy after there's a merge to your main branch? GitHub Action is your friend. Do you want to welcome people when they raise their first issue or pull request by replying with an automated comment? GitHub Action is your friend. Okay, that was really cheesy. I promise that would be the last time I, I do those types of things. But GitHub Actions, you can use and do so many things with them. It's so powerful and it does start off the majority of the time. You just need YAML config. Go have a try. Tip number four. This is really important. I've left the most important one until last. A release is a stable point in your project's journey and people can then use a stable version in your project as a dependency of their project or they want to deploy your project or anything else. They've got a version number, in this case, V0.18.1. And they know at that point in time it was stable and when they use that number, however they're using your project, they're gonna get that exact version and it's gonna be super stable. I find that projects that don't take releases a bit scary and the projects that do look more professional. I'm not saying that a project is straight away better, but you know, first impressions is really important. When someone looks at your project to either contribute or to look to see if they're gonna hire you. If you've got releases at the bottom right of your repo, it looks super professional. You can create these releases on a GitHub action, as I mentioned before, there are actions already existing, but you can also create it from the web UI. You pick your branch or your commit and you say, create a release, this is the version numbers. You can do it all through GitHub. So you 
have no excuses. Create these releases manually if you want to begin with, but later on, definitely automate it. It means you get all the benefit without much of the effort. It will just work. You just need a trigger point to know when to take the release. So what are you waiting for? What are you gonna do right now? Let me know in the comments below what you're gonna do to improve your projects and to improve you to stand out so companies and clients can come to you. And if you're not interested, you can always say no thank you, but it's better to have those options. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I look forward to seeing you in our Eddie Hub Discord, link in the description below.